Hey guys, welcome back to the castle wall tutorial. In this video, we're going to set up our initial parameters for the digital asset. Uh, so I'm here in Houdini 19, a brand new fresh scene, and let's get started. So the first thing I would recommend you do, and this is really good practice for any project really, is just go to file and create a new project. Uh, somewhere on disk that makes sense to you. Give it a, a, a name that makes sense. So we'll call this maybe wall tool build and then save it somewhere on disk. Uh, and then what it's going to do, Houdini will generate a bunch of folders and it'll just keep you organized. But more importantly than that, it'll give us access to this dollar job variable, which can come in useful um, to keep ourselves organized. Okay, so just going through the list, there's a couple of things we don't really need for this project. We'll keep geometry, we'll keep digital assets. We're not dealing with any simulation data or Alembics. We'll keep textures, and uh, we'll keep renders, flip books, scripts, composites, and audio don't really need okay so I've already done that so what I'd recommend is you set up your project ready to go and then do a very quick file save as and save it into your project folder there okay so with that let's jump in and get started so I'll put down my first geometry node I'll call it wall tool all right and with that we'll jump inside now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to establish the base parameters of our wall uh, and we'll generate that brick pattern. Um, so we're going to make use of curves. So I'm going to drop down two line nodes. OK, so line one, and then I'll hold down Alt, click and drag to create line two. All right. Line one is going to be our width. And line two is going to be our height. All right. So let's just configure the width first. We want the width to run about Z. Okay, and we want this to be centered about the origin. So let's make, make those changes now so we can change direction to Z. And we can also take this length parameter here. If we select the value, just click and drag over to the Z origin, paste a relative channel reference. Okay, you can see it kind of shoots off into space there. If we negate this value, and divide it by two. You can see our point, our line sits neatly about the origin. And when we change the length, we've got that sat on the origin there. So nice and neat, okay. Um, also just in my viewport, just a quick note, I've got my points selected. I've also got my point numbers turned on. Uh, I've got my normals turned on and I've also got primitive numbering turned on as well. So th oh, this is the information that I'm kind of looking at and the information will be manipulating uh, as we progress. So these are kind of very important to us uh, when we're doing procedural modeling. All right, so that's the, the length sort of configured. I'm gonna set it to something like five meters just to give us a bit of geometry to work with. So there we go, we've got a five meter long wall, if you like. Um, next for the height. Again, this can, this can stay in Y, pointing directly upwards. And the height obviously will be the length parameter, so however high we want our basic wall to be. So we'll just, again, set this to something reasonable just so we've got something to work with and we'll go with three. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to copy those points, copy those lines, the width line onto the height line. So we can take our line width, plug it into the first input of our copy to points and our height will be the points that we want to copy it to. Okay, so now we have something like this, all right? And these nodes are gonna be very important as we progress, we're gonna turn it into a digital asset and these will uh, reference some parameters on that digital asset. And what I like to do again, just to keep myself organized, just to indicate in the network view that these are important parameters, I'm gonna give them a yellow color. So I'm gonna select them both, press C on my keyboard, just give them a gold color there. So I know when I'm building my digital asset, I know that these are kind of important parameters okay so with that done what we can do is we can start adding some more detail to this um, wall section here and we'll place down a resample node okay and put that in the height and as you can see that's given us lots and lots of rows now Okay, lots and lots of primitives. We just want to make a few changes to this. We don't want to resample based on length, so we can turn that off. What we want is maximum segments. Okay, so we'll turn that on. So now what we've got 
is a wall with 10 rows of bricks, if you like. Okay, so this will be our parameter to set the number of bricks. Okay, so I'll just give that a name, brick rows. And again, this will be promoted to the digital asset, so I'll give it that yellow color just so we, yeah, we can see it quickly. All right, the next thing we need to do is another resample node. Okay, I'm gonna plug that into our copy to points. And this is going to be how many bricks are in our wall. Okay, so as you can see, the, def the default for the resample gives us tons and tons of points. Uh, so a point every 10 centimeters. So that would be a brick that's sort of 10 centimeters wide, if you like. It's a bit much uh, for our needs. So we'll drop that right down to something like every 75 centimeters. Say. So it's a really chunky kind of castle wall type, uh, type scale, um, but you can sort of dial that in as, as you wish. So we'll give that a name of resample brick spacing and give it that yellow color so we're aware. All right, so we're starting to get all the information we need to progress. As you can see, if you can sort of imagine each brick would occupy the space between the points here, you can see how this brick wall is starting to be constructed. We still need to fix some of the points so we get that sort of nice looking alternating brick pattern. And we can do that with a couple of wrangle nodes uh, so we can manipulate the points um, directly. Okay, we don't need to select them or shift them or transform them or anything like that. We can do it procedurally using a few lines of code. All right, so let's do that. Before we do that, there's one piece of information that we need and that's our normal. Okay, so we need to give these points a direction. Okay, so we can do that with a normal attribute. And there's a cool little hack. If you put down a polyframe node and plug that in, okay, and just make sure you've got normal tails turned on so we can see the effect of this node. We don't want to generate a normal, we want to generate the normal based on the tangent. So we're gonna put N in there, okay? And we'll just make some changes to this. So we've got all our points are kind of following the tangent of the curve, all right? So we've got this direction that we can take advantage of when it comes to shifting these points along that primitive. And the way we've configured it, this will work on any sort of piece of incoming geometry. So if it's cur if it's a um, curved, the, the normals will follow the tangent of that curve and our bricks will remain sort of in line with the wall. All right. So let's make a start on that alternating brick pattern. Let's just sort of analyze what we need to do. So I'm gonna jump across to the right view with space four, okay? And just sort of take a look. Just turn my grid off. So. If we look at the pattern we're trying to generate, we want to shift some points half the distance again. So they sit in the middle, okay? But we only want to do that on alternating primitives, okay? So primitive zero we can leave, primitive two we can leave, primitive four we can leave, primitive six we can leave. Um, but the other ones, the alternating ones, we want to actually shift these points across, all right? Now, how do we get this value, what's this distance between point zero and point one or point one and point two? We need to find that distance, okay? And on the resample node, so if we go up, back up to the resample node, our brick spacing, and scroll down, we can see the resample node has the ability to give us a distance attribute, okay? So that will store a point attribute based on the distance to the next point, uh, which is very useful and we can take advantage of that. So if we turn that on, we get this PT dist attribute. So now, if we take a look in our geometry spreadsheet and look at points, you can see all our points have got a point attribute and they've also got a point distance attribute. Okay, and we can take advantage of that and use it to manipulate and drive our points position. So let's jump back, okay? And the way we're going to tackle that is through wrangle nodes, okay? I, I personally think wrangle nodes are sort of one of the key things in learning Houdini. If you get confident and comfortable using these, you can really do some, uh, some really cool stuff. Um, so let's think about it. We want to shift these points based on half the distance, okay? So let's make a start on how we would do that. However, we want these end points to remain fixed. We don't want to shift these out in space because that'll ruin the shape of our wall. 
Um, so we can selectively ignore these points at the end. Okay. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to look at how many neighbors each point has got. Okay, so point zero has got one neighbor. Point nine has got one neighbor. Um, point one, however, has got two neighbors, point zero and point two. All right, so if we tell Houdini to ignore anything that's got less than two neighbors, or should I say greater than one neighbor, we can selectively ignore these endpoints and just shift these center points. So let's configure that now. I'm going to create a new integer variable called n count, the neighbor count, and I'm going to make use of the neighbor count function. All right, so again, that will do exactly what we've just described. I'm going to put zero, which references this first input here. And the point number we're talking about is the current point number that's being processed. Okay, so these wrangle nodes operate over points. Okay, and it'll do this operation, whatever we type here, for every single point in turn. Okay, so it'll work through iteratively through each point. Okay, so what we're doing is we're storing that integer neighbor count value in there and then we can jump into uh, an if statement okay and we can say if the primitive number modulo 2 equals 0 then do something so if you never come across this modulo statement this is like integer division and it gives you the remainder okay so what does that mean um, well 2 goes into 2 once with 0 left over. So that would be a tick for that if statement. Um, 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. So that would prevent it from going into this if statement. So it would effectively skip this one. 2 goes into 4 two times with 0 left over. So again, that's a tick. 5 goes twice with 1 left over. So ignore it. And then six goes in, uh, 2 goes into 6 three times with zero left over. Okay, so tick. Modulo is really useful for this kind of alternating or pattern generating um, sequencing and we'll be making use of it quite a bit as we progress. So with this line of code here, what we're saying is do alternate primitives and you can see the primitive numbers there, zero to six. So once we're in this if statement, what we can do is we can check our n count number and see if it's greater than one. So if it's got more than one neighbor, you can then go into another if statement. Sorry, I'll just make this a little bigger. Okay. And then what we want to do is manipulate the position of those points that we've got selected. So we can reference the position attribute. We can add to that with plus equals the normal vector. So the direction the point is facing multiplied by that point distance attribute that we've created. Okay, so PT dist. And if you remember, we only need to shift it half. We don't need to shift it the full distance. So we'll divide that by two and finish with a semicolon. All right, and there we go. So you can see that we have successfully sort of shifted those points uh, half distance. Okay, and we've got, you know, nice and neat on this side. Okay, however, we've got a bit of an issue that we need to fix here in this. We've got a very large brick here. What we want ideally is this sort of spacing at this side here. Okay, so we need to fix this somehow. You can see we've got a big gap there that's kind of missing a half brick. All right, so let's fix that. So we could do that again using a resample node. Plug that in. And rather than resampling the whole thing, we just want to resample along the polygon's edge. And the length needs to be the same as our brick spacing length. Okay, so I'm gonna link these two parameters together. So I'm gonna go back up the chain to my resample brick spacing node, right click on this length here. So copy parameter and then paste it into the length there. So paste relative references. Okay, and make sure you've got resample polygon edge on as well. Um, so what you can see now is we've got an extra point added in here. Okay, but it's in the wrong place. If we take a look closely, and I'll just turn off point normals so we can see. If we look closely, this distance here is not the same as this distance here. So we've got a little bit more processing work to do to fix that, to maintain this brick pattern is nice and even throughout. 
okay and that's another good excuse to use a point wrangle and look at ways in which we can manipulate points again so um we'll do that in the next video so thanks for watching